I've done a lot of videos on my channel about when to take social security to get the most money out of the system, whether you take it early or wait. Today, I'm gonna to give you two hidden reasons to take social security early that have no math at all, no math in the video. So the goal of a good financial plan is taking the math and marrying it together with someone's personal situation because people are people and everybody's situation is different. So we can always look at the math and say, well, this looks like the best option, but then you have to apply it to your own situation to see if that's actually what's best for you. That's what prompted the video today is to look at the non-math side of social security and two reasons to take social security early. The first one is this, the money's just more useful when you take it sooner. People go through three phases in retirement. First up, we have the go-go years. Those are the fun years. Those are the awesome years where you're doing all of the cool stuff. You're traveling, you're uh, hanging out with the grandkids, taking them on a vacation, going to wine country, whatever it is, whatever you've been waiting for, this is bucket list time. You're doing all of the good stuff early on in retirement. And then you get to the, what we call the slow go years. That's um, still a really good time, but you start to do some things maybe a little closer to home, maybe not traveling so much, maybe not as much physical activity. Uh, and towards the end of retirement stage three, the no go years, you're here. You're with your family, hopefully you're enjoying your life, but you don't have as much use for money. You start to spend a lot more money on healthcare at that time and not on the fun stuff. You're no longer checking off the bucket list items. And so here's the thing, the earlier you take the money, the more likely you are to use it for the fun stuff, the things that really help you enjoy your retirement. To have a retirement well lived, money is more useful at the time when you can use it rather than having more money when you're 93 years old uh, and you couldn't care less about traveling. Now, if you're a 93 year old world traveler, my apologies, I did not mean to overgeneralize there. Waiting all the way to 70 to get any money out of the system, even though from a math perspective, that's the right answer if you plan to stick around and you're successful in that plan, it's less useful money to have a larger check coming when you're 89 years old than it is when you're 63, 64, 65, 67 years old and you're really having an awesome time. And so that's the first thing to consider is what's the use of the money and is it better to get to use the money for the things that you want to do with your retirement? Is it gonna allow you to take an extra trip with the kids every year and the grandkids? Is it gonna allow you to buy the vacation property and go skiing uh, every winter and you can't wait to do that and maybe you're only going to do that for seven eight nine ten years but guess what that's really important to you as opposed to i'm not going to take it because i saw a video on the internet that i should wait until age 70 and at that point it's just not something that you decide that you want to do and so it becomes one of those unfulfilled bucket list items don't have unfulfilled bucket list items. If you can help it, if the rest of the plan looks good, it can make sense to take it earlier and use that to help check things off that bucket list, to have a retirement well lived, not just a retirement with the highest financial return. While you're watching the video, meander on down to the description. I got some stuff down there, a couple of links uh, to some things out on our website, including the ability, if you're interested, to book a little bit of time with me to talk about your own scenario. If you got social security questions, retirement planning questions. I talk to a couple of people every month from uh, the channel uh, who look me up and say, hey, I'm looking for a little bit of guidance. I'd be happy to do it. Uh, check that out along with some other stuff that's down below. The second thing is, what's it gonna cost you? And I don't mean financial here. I told you no math in the video. We're not gonna do math. What's it gonna cost you to work for another three, four, five, six, maybe eight years if you're talking about the difference between 62 and 70. The wear and tear, the continued stress. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, I just did a video about this. If you don't enjoy what you're doing and you have the ability to not do it anymore, you've got the finances in order and you don't have to do it, stop doing it because one, you don't get more time, and two, what's the additional wear and tear like, the additional stress versus saying, I'm gonna retire and now my time is my own, and not only is my time my own, I've got this extra bit of money coming in that I can use to go back to point number one and do some fun stuff with it. So even if from a math perspective it means losing and i'm going to go like losing in air quotes because did you really lose you got less money out of the system if you took it early and then you stick around we've got math to prove that i've got videos that show that but did you really lose if it allowed you less stress 
a, a happier retirement because you were able to spend more time doing the things that you wanted to do rather than putting your head down and going to work uh, and continuing on with something that you didn't enjoy that not only stole time from you, but also added additional stress or strain or physical wear and tear. Now, I told you there was gonna be a warning. You know I'm not gonna do a video that's just completely one-sided. I gotta tell you about the other side a little bit. So here's the other side of it. If you do elect it early, two things to watch out for. One, make sure your health care is covered. If you're gonna take it before 65, and that means you're gonna leave the workforce and you don't have a, a employer coverage anymore on your health care, and you're not yet to Medicare age, you've got a big potential gap there. Now you can fill it, there's ways to do it, but it gets expensive. Make sure that your plan can withstand that. The second thing is the earnings cap limit for Social Security. So if you take Social Security before your full retirement age, there's a limit on what you can earn. $21,240 this year in 2023 as I record the video. If you earn more than $21,240 outside of Social Security, you say, I'm still gonna work part-time, I'm gonna consult, I'm gonna do whatever, and you're above that, they're gonna start eating into the Social Security check. And so that's bad business. You gotta do the math and make sure that that's not something that's going to impact you. Now, it doesn't include things like pensions, annuities, dividends, investment income. So there's ways to have income that don't count against you for social security purposes, but you gotta do the math on that before you go ahead and take social security and then they just eat up your check. Cause for every $2 over that 21,240, they're just gonna take a dollar of the social security check away. And that really eats into things if you're before your full retirement age. Not a thing after you reach full retirement age, but this is not a video about that. This is a video about taking it early and enjoying it. And so I have to have to point that out to you. I hope that brought a few things to light for you. It's not always about the math. Remember a good retirement plan takes the math and the personal side of it and mushes them together uh, so that it can meet the goals that you have for yourself. And I hope this gave you something to think about. Uh, I thank you for being here. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel. Come on back. Lots of stuff about retirement planning for you. Uh, and I'll see you next time.